Good morning. Happy Thursday. I have neural coffee in hand and it is perfect. I was uh, watching one of your uh, the, the simple solutions video for the medial knee pain. Uh huh. And, and on the on on one on one video where there's that's a part one I think for the medial knee pain when you're in half kneeling right knees forward and you're untwisting the knee uh, with with two cables the right cable is pulling you forward. And you're okay. basically uh, letting the right arm, right cable pull you further forward. So you're going into late and you have that heels eleva- uh, toe, toe elevation to, yeah. to get that dorsiflexion just to untwist the knee. Yeah. I, have, I have a question. How would you construct that if you, if you have a left medial knee pain? Would you... Would you still let right cable pull you? Because if are you, you let, are you are you leading with the left knee? Is that what you're left, saying? Yeah, I'm leading with the left knee, <clears throat> and I just want to know: is it is it safe or is it okay to <laughs> let the let the left cable pull me forward on the left? But then I'm just putting my left leg uh, toward towards the late correct and- so so that's that's why you have to sort of pay attention to what you're doing now do, let me ask you a question um do you think it's necessary for that need to eventually be able to go through a late representation like as i see it i just have to get the er of the femur so i could do it in early as well okay but well, hang on that, that wasn't my question yeah okay. Is yeah, it, it is. necessary? It is. Is yeah. it? Okay. So at some point in time, I do want to do that. That doesn't mean that it's the only solution. All right. right? All right. So you, you do have to attend to, to other, other issues. So for instance, um, if I had a situation where um Let's just say I have a superimposition of external rotation from the pelvis downward, as well as the tibiofemoral ER at the knee. Yeah. That would be the wrong thing to do because I'm promoting the reinforcement of that superimposed external rotation. Do you understand? Yeah. Yeah, so so under that situation, it's not the right solution. All right, so... So your thought process is correct, is so, that you may not want to do that. You may want to move them back towards early and then create the orientation at the knee because I've got, I've got, I've got internal rotation coming up from the ground in that situation. Yeah. Right? Yeah to prevent the ER from being uh, superimposed. Oh, yeah. So in, in terms of, I was thinking about it, putting someone not in half kneeling, but more in staggered stance. Would, Maybe. Would that, would that be enough? It, it's still a knee bend, but it's not like 90 degrees, but right. knee is still bending. So we're still getting the relative. Okay. So, so if the knee is not bending as much, Okay, you still have access to um, the knee orientation. You're still still influencing the knee orientation, but where would you be putting greater emphasis? On the on the foot and on the on the hip. There you go. Thank you. Perfect. Yes. There you go. Right. right. So so remember, the knee is the dumbest joint in the leg, right? I see. And so if I can control the foot position, if I can control the hip position, I have a much better chance of accessing the knee orientation that I'm after. All right. And so the degree of knee bend is an influence because the more, the closer I get to that imaginary 90 degrees of knee bend, that's where the, that's where you're going to see this really. The maximal untwisting. Yeah. So, so that's where I have the greatest amount of, of rotation across the knee. 
And so if, I, if I'm trying to manage hip and foot position first, then it would behoove me to not use as much bending of the knee in that activity. Yeah, right. Yeah, makes sense. So that's so, a really good, that's a, it's, and I use the same strategy. It, it, it's like, it's just a really good strategy. You, you have to control the other elements first uh, because again, so think about this. Um, someone, and somebody just literally just asked me that. He's like, why do you have to worry about the, the extra rotation at the hip first? Why can't I just untwist the knee? And it's like, well, sometimes you can. If you need to get symptomatic relief, I go after the knee right away, right? If it's really bad, right? But I also know that if I don't address the hip, that knee goes right back to where it started because the mechanics that drove the, that desire for that knee to twist inward in the first place is still there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. People get a little too, you know, zeroed in on, oh, you have a knee knee problem when the reality is you have a knee result. Yeah. Good day. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you basically create a better circumstances be uh, in, in a staggered stance, be, because if you put someone like that in a half kneeling, it, their foot would probably just go out on the yeah. if they, yeah maybe yeah so so you're gonna see all the external rotation compensatory strategies start to show up because they don't have access they don't have so, access to that that range of motion yet all right all right okay. so so then I see it I would I I could still use the the right cable pulling me pulling me forward and. Correct. I just have a follow up to that because you, I just want to hear your thought process on why you chose uh, half kneeling in part one and staggered stance in part two. I don't remember. I, I do you know how long ago I did those? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can, I, I can imagine. I just, <laughs> it's, I, I was probably working off a scenario that I was actually working with someone in real life, and then it was right, just like, yeah. oh, we did this today, so I'm going to do this. All yeah, right. it's yeah. it's just it's just options, okay. Now, but but again, it, so so here's what I would say is like you understood right away, like oh, this makes total sense if I do it if if this is the problem on this side, but if the problem is on this side, I have to look at it from a different perspective. That's that's the principle that that you want to make sure that you pay attention to, and like I said, you do have that understanding, so that's a good thing. Um, as yeah. far as I yeah, like I'd have to go back. I literally would have to go back and look at the video as to why I chose that. Um, because what I was looking at, I, and the one that you're talking about, I do remember that one, is I was trying to get them to the end of middle propulsion, where I where I have a little bit more uh, direct influence on, like I'm stopping the tibia, and then I'm influencing the femur. And so, yeah. so chances are, I'm doing something similar in that regard in the other video is that I'm, I'm trying to influence a very specific aspect of the, of the orientation. Right. But again, and, I haven't looked at it. And I, I think and that that was like, uh, that was really like way, I think, was that pre? pre I think it was. I think yeah. it was pre-pandemic, yeah. Yeah, but those, some of those program. videos are so great when you. <laughs> yeah, you gotta be really careful. You gotta be really careful when you bring up stuff from um, like two years ago or last week because I'm really old now and my memory <laughs> is not very good. <laughs> all right all right Th those vi videos are still great but i need like i use oh, one one hour of my day just to go through them and try to understand what's happening but it's I it's great when you when you get it